Disney's Lorcana Rise of the Floodboard is here. In this video covering the release, we're going to jump right into one of the starter decks here. More specifically, the Amethyst and Steel starter deck. So right off the bat, you can see we have uh, Merlin and Tiana on the front here. Uh, on the back, it has more information about like you know the lore a little bit, the cards, and what's going to be inside. Uh, you got your entire deck list on the side here, which comes up with uh, not only just what card is inside, uh, but how many of each one. Uh, we won't review too much of that though, because we're just going to take a look inside ourselves. So let's open this bad boy up first. Yeah, look. All right. So you can see when we open it up, some little neat packaging here. We'll kind of stick that off to the side. Uh, so you have your deck here. We're going to get into that uh, last, though. Uh, first thing, it comes with a single booster pack here, which has 12 additional cards inside of it. We've got the uh, quick start rules, which is, you know, any basic information you need on how to play the game and, you know, different specifics and all that beginner stuff for anybody that's just starting out. We've got a play mat here, uh, which is specific to Rise of the Floodborne as the one for first chapter was stylistically different. You can see it tells you where you can put your deck, your discard, your cards in play, your inkwell, and your lore. And speaking of the lore there, you do get a lore counter here, which you'll just move up where the number is in the holder, plus damage counters. So everything you need to get started to play right away. Uh, let's put this off to the side, and we'll jump straight into the starter deck here. Now you can see uh, right on top here, uh, we have, we're going to have the two hollows. In the first chapter, the two hollows are underneath the first normal card. Uh, but now it looks like they're just putting them first and foremost. Uh, so we got Shapeshifter Merlin. Uh, whenever one of your other characters is returned to your hand from play, this character gets plus one this turn. So uh, we're going to pay attention to see if there's any cards that really bounce stuff back into your hand to see how useful he is. And then we have Celebrating Princess Tiana. She gets Resist plus two, which is just fantastic. We're going to see probably quite a bit of Resist in this deck here with Steel. Uh, she's the super rare of the deck, and when this character is exerted and you have no cards in your hand, opponents can't play actions. So depending on who you're going against, that can be quite good. So let's put her up there, and we'll go, uh, just go straight into all the Amethyst cards here. So it looks like we got three of the Chip the Teacups, just, you know, your basic filler for a deck. Those one-cost cards get out early. Uh, we've got Dr. Facilier, Sammy Opportunist, which, uh, looks like we got two of him. He's evasive. Just another decent filler card there to have to um, add to that. Uh, we've got Hey Hey here. He's back. This is a really interesting card because uh, when this character is banished in a challenge, uh, you'll return him to your hand. And we got three of him. Uh, we got Cusco here, uh, the Wanted Llama. Three of him, and this is actually a pretty decent uh, common card to get as uh, when this character is banished, you can draw a card. So basically, you no. Know, uh, Whenever somebody challenges him and gets rid of him, you get uh, draw support. Uh, we've got our first rare card here with the Fox Meta Mim. Now, when you play this character, banish her or return another chosen character of yours to your hand, and she has Rush. So the the thing with Meta Mim uh, is that when you play her, you have to put somebody back in your hand. Now, typically, I'm not a huge fan of this play style, but I'll get into it later when it comes to the uh, the way that the set is made up, but it is slightly better in this starter deck here. We've got Madame Mim Snake, very similar ability there. Uh, just not the, uh, the rare version, and she does not have Rush, and is not as strong. We do have three of her, though. All right, we're going to get into our Merlin cards here. So we got your basic uh, two crab Merlins there. We've got... Uh, three of the Go Whirlins, which is um, actually the better one, I'd say, because uh, when you play him and when you least play, you gain a lore. That even includes if he gets bumped back to your hand for some reason. Uh, next up here, we have the Rabbit Merlin. So with this one, very similar theming for all the Merlin cards here, but when you play them and then when they return, they do something. This one's drawing a hand and is a rare card. Uh, and then it looks like we're going to have two of the Merlin Squirrels. Uh, which, once again, when you play him and when he leaves play, you get to do something. Now, looks like we got 
two freeze cards here. Now the thing about freeze is this is a card from the first set. Uh, just kind of like fill out the rest of what we got here. Um, I'm stuck. We've got two of those. Those are gonna be the last two cards from our Amethyst uh, to, to round that out. Up next, we're gonna have uh, two common cards here from Steel with Beast here, uh, which is really interesting because when you play him, not only do you get a character out, but you can just deal damage to somebody, which is very Steel. Uh, Benjade here, Guardian of the Dragon Gem. Uh, just some decent filler there for uh, a three cost character to give you two lore. We've got two of the Cinderella Knight in Trains, which is great. Uh, at, you know, getting through your deck a little bit and making sure you have cards that you want in your hand. Low cost character there. Uh, just another filler, uh, a little slightly higher cost filler card here with Eli DeBoof. Uh, we got some Hercules in training here. Once again, just lower cost filler cards here. All right, for our first steel rare, we have Junior Chipmunk Kronk. So he has resist plus one, and during your turn, whenever this uh, character banishes another character in a challenge, you can deal two damage to chosen character. Now, it's very similar if you know the giant Tinkerbell card from set one. Similar to that, but he can't shift, but he does have resist plus one instead. Uh, I think this is a great card to have just in general. So just having it in this deck uh, overall just improves it quite a bit. Uh, we've got how many? Two Lawrence's here where uh, when this character has no damage, he gets uh, plus four strength. So, you know, you can quest with him a bunch and unless the opponent takes him out in one hit uh, or if the opponent doesn't take him out in one hit, you know, he becomes a lot less weak, uh, a lot less strong uh, and easier to take out, but still good with the lore there. All right, so we got a bunch more cards, it looks like, in a row that are going to be straight from set one. We've got three of these Galactic Lilos, which are just the filler cards, it looks like, with a high strength. We've got uh, two Prince Eric cards here that have Challenger on him. All right, back to Rise of the Floodborne cards, we have Prince Naveen. Once again, it looks like a lot of these steel cards are just kind of, you know, filling out some of the spot. They don't really have any unique abilities too much. Uh, all right, we got our next rare card here with the Huntsman. So whenever this character quests, you draw a card and then choose and discard a card. Very similar to an ability we saw earlier uh, with the uh, Cinderella there. But this one's whenever he quests, just not when I uh, you play him, which can be interesting. All right, up next we got uh, the Prince here, which gives us some bodyguards in our steel deck. And he has resist plus one and gets two lore. Just a great card to have out there to tank some damage and get you a bunch of lore while he is out. Uh, we got some more uh, tanky, but uh, filler and one cost cards there. This is the last of our characters. Uh, looks like we have Last Cannon, just a great item in general to have here to give people challengers just for an ink. And then our last two items are going to be the Mouse Hammer, which gives resist plus one. So, this deck in general, especially since it has steel in it, is going to have some of that resist, which makes it a little bit more uh, tanky. Let's get to like how the deck meshes well together. So I'm going to start right off the bat with that Merlin card there. What cards do we have in this deck that really helps with uh, bouncing cards back into your hand? Now, I don't, uh, there wasn't really any in the steel card uh, or in the steel cards, not I'm stuck. Uh, let's kind of get these. All off to the side here. <laughs> uh, just all the steals. Plus, I'm stuck. I think I shuffled in here somewhere. Yeah. So let's just go uh, right into the the purple cards here. Uh, so I believe there was a couple cards I noticed that were good for this, but not as many as I would have liked. So the hey hey does work with that where. Um, when he's banished, he gets returned to your hand instead. Uh, so that would count for Merlin's ability there. Uh, so since he is two and one, you know, just attacking with him to get him put into your hand and then have your Merlin gain one lore, it's good because you're able to challenge but still get basically both of the lore that you would have had in general, especially if you have multiple of these guys out. Um, uh, so where this is really going to come into play, you're going to see, is the Madame Mim cards. Now, for these four mana Mim cards, uh, when you play her, you have to put a card back into your hand. So, the Merlin card here is going to actually work very well with his antagonist from the movie, Madam Mim. Where, if you play one of her cards, uh, you bounce somebody back into your hand, he gets plus one lore. And she's out. Especially if you're doing this Madam Mim, you can then rush 
uh, get her out there and deal some damage too. So I believe these Mad Mim cards and the three Hey Hey cards are the only cards that are going to synergize with that Merlin there. But uh, let's see here. Yeah, looks like the rest of these are just kind of more filler support stuff. All right, let's look at that Tiana. So um, they're, you know, outside of just being able to just play your cards. So she's going to be useful later on when you have no cards in your hand because there isn't any cards in this deck really that uh, gets rid of cards. In fact, that might be problematic if you're returning a bunch of cards to your hand uh, with the Merlin card there uh, to give yourself no more stuff. There are a lot of low cost cards though. So once you get a bunch of ink out there, you can play all your cards, use her ability. Uh, well, actually no, because it has to be at the end of your turn. So I guess it would be, you know, play your Madame Mim, bounce the character back to your hand and you're gonna wanna play it then kind of the strategy there in order to get the best out of both of these. Uh, but I think the important thing uh, to note when it comes to these starter decks in general is that they are just starter decks. So you're not supposed to have advanced level play when it comes to these. And it is meant to be like overall when you're building a deck, uh, you don't want to have just one plan when you play. You want to be able to, you know, adapt and have different things that you can do as you play. Now, when it comes to uh, the old cards in the set and why they're here, I think the Lilo is just filler. Freeze gives you that exert, which I, I think this is in here because there are a lot more cards in Rise of the Floodborn. If you're playing against a non-starter deck uh, that you just want to play and have sit there and never exert them to quest or challenge because their passive build is really great. So having Freeze is a great way to get them exerted to be able to challenge them. And then... There are some cards like this that do grant challenger, but uh, steel cards are really good with um, early challenging cards. So I think that's why we have Prince Eric in the deck here. All right, let's take a look then at the steel cards. Like I said, I don't think there's a lot of like cross utility outside of just them being steel cards, which is you know really tanky, strong. You got uh, some of these characters with resist, the bodyguard, and then some of the, uh, the draw support there. And like I said, this really good Kronk card. You know, this would have been like, uh, this one's only a rare compared to the giant tank, which I guess that's how much they uh, really appreciate the Floodborne, especially uh, with this new set here. But I think probably best card in the deck that you'll be able to get if you can play it out there. Not only is it inkable, but it's able to deal extra damage. Starter deck here is $16.99. So when it comes to value and giving you everything you need to, to start playing, I think that value is more than worth it. Uh, just in general, especially with the cards in this deck, I believe, um, you know, a lot of these steel cards are going to be very useful if you're building your steel deck, uh, especially with all the, the new ability resist plus one, it's nice to see those in here. And then if you're looking for that, uh, bounce back kind of play to your hand, uh, the, the mana min will work really well with that. Uh, great support cards with the Cusco and then the, uh, Dr. Facility here, which gives you, you know, an evasive card to have in this deck, which is nice with the uh the amethyst deck there so the last thing that we're gonna do is just open up this starter pack or this uh booster pack here just to see what we get in it and i'll even comment briefly on you know what i would and wouldn't want to uh mix into uh the deck that i just got so first thing we're gonna have a, a basil here a rapunzel uh we do have another evasive dr facilia we could put in there we've got fidget panic and then we got another steel uh, Cinderella here. All right, so bought a, a bunch of duplicates that were from in there uh, with Lawrence. Uh, we do have this card, which is pretty good, Bucky. We got this Beauty Sleep Yzma, um, which would just be kind of like a filler card if you want to put her in there. Uh, okay, we got this really good Shere Khan card. This is one of the ones I was talking about earlier where uh, like his ability is whenever one of your characters challenges another character, you gain one lore. Due to that, you just want to have him sit there. You don't want to have him challenging and dying because that keeps you from being able to, you know, uh, gain lore every time you challenge. Uh, but would not work with the starter deck that we currently have. Uh, we do have for other rare uh, card here, a steel card, um, which I'd have to double check uh, specific things, uh, how, how useful this would be uh, for uh, like basically how many characters we have that are four strength or higher. And it'd be interesting to see, does that affect him? while he does technically have plus four strength. And for our hollow here, we have Jays. So that's all the information we have to discuss about these uh, 
Amethyst Steel Starter Deck for Disney's Lorcana Rise of the Floodborne. If you're looking for more information on Lorcana or the new set Rise of the Floodborne, check out the video or playlist here. Until next time, quest on.